Hey guys, welcome back to Project Tube. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. In front of you is the card for my weed whacker. Uh, before I moved, the priming bulb right here broke, and so I took the carb off the weed whacker and took it apart, uh, thinking that I was going to replace the bulb here. But then I ended up moving, and so it got thrown in a drawer. Now I'm at my new property, and I decided, well, I need to do some weed whacking. So I pulled it all out and discovered that I am missing the bottom plate for the float valve. Somewhere it got lost. So today what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Fusion 360. We're going to design this plate. We're going to print it out on the 3D printer, and we're going to cast it out of aluminum. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to jump over to the Fusion 360 and start designing this carb plate. The first thing I'd like to say is my screen capture software and Fusion 360 did not play well together. I think they're just both too uh, resource intensive and they just drown my computer down. So with that said, the other thing is I am not a Fusion 360 guru. I've never had any formal training with this software or even watched any tutorials. The most that I have done is maybe Google certain operations like how to make a hole or things like that. Um, there are a lot of good tutorials, Maker Muse does some on it and I've been meaning to watch them. But again, this is not a very complicated model to build. I mean, it's basically just a plate and it has a raised section in it. So, you know, not too bad there and I think pretty much anyone out there could do this. So here's the finished design. It came out pretty good considering my level of expertise with the software. The hardest part was actually the holes and getting the correct offset off the sides of the plate. Using my digital calipers and measuring the, the carb and getting those just centered just perfectly. So the next step is to add some sprues. So let's get on to that. So here's the finished model after I printed it. Uh, the top and bottom layers were a little bit rough, but it's the carb part so it really doesn't matter. Uh, inside the bowl where the support was was actually really rough and I did sand down the whole thing a little bit but um, you know it, like I said it doesn't have to look that great now keep in mind this is not PLA this is machinable waxes uh, print to cast filament I'll leave a link in the description it is a wax filament specifically made for casting you can if you're interested in getting it you can use coupon code project all caps to get 10% off your order and it helps out this channel as well um, and it's a really cool filament in general. Uh, it's a bit expensive, I think it's like $45, $50, uh, but you get a lot because it's not as dense as PLA and it's sold by weight. So I've been on the same roll, it's probably half, half finish for months and months and I've done all kinds of castings on it as you can see on my channel. So originally I put the sprues on the sides of the plate going vertically and having the plate horizontal and I tried casting it and it did not fill around the screw holes. So this is attempt number two basically and I'm going to try to lay the, you know, do a vertical cast basically. And uh, I'm just using styrofoam for the sprues. I know everybody asks, why don't you just print out the sprues? But honestly, it's just easier just to use styrofoam. It's cheap and it's fast. To design and then print the sprue, is it just takes longer. And when you do multiple prints and stuff, it's just not worth it. So maybe in the future I'll do a, a cast where I actually design the sprue and print it like that. But in, in general, it's just easier to use my hot wire cutter and just cut them out. Here's the mold after the plaster is all hardened, but there's still quite a lot of moisture within the plaster. And if we threw it in the forge like this for the burnout process, it cracked like crazy. All right, guys, I've had questions before on how I dry my mold out. What I've done is I needed a lid for my forge. I know you can't see it, but it's right here. It's just because it's a bright day and I'm recording this on my cell phone, but um, I needed a lid for that. So I took this old propane tank and I just cut the bottom off of it. So this is the lid for my forge and uh, you know, exhaust out of the top where the fill valve would be. And the bottom portion, what I do is I just take this and I set it over my forge, kind of like a pan. And then I put the mold inside the forge or on top of this and, and then put the, the lid on it. And it kind of creates like an oven and there's indirect heat. And that's how I dry my molds out. It dries out really fast because it gets pretty hot in there, six, seven, 800 degrees inside there and that allows me to dry my mold out really quick and then usually once it's dry I will take the bottom portion off and then go ahead and stick it directly into the forge for another I don't know 30 minutes and that's the burnout process and I'll flip it around and do different stuff like that until it's completely burned out but that's basically how I do do the burnout process now I used to do it on my barbecue it would take almost all day 
So now this is how I do it and it works great. I can get it done in, uh, I don't know, three, four hours, sometimes less depending on the size of the mold. This one will probably take about two hours to get the burnout and the dry drying process done. So anyways, that's how I do it. It's finally time to light the forge, melt the metal, and make the pour. It seems like the last couple castings I've done, my ability to pour the molten metal into the main sprue has been just terrible. And it was no different on this one. I, It wasn't a good pour in general. I mean, I went in the hole, but, you know, I, I was left with a big lake of aluminum on the top, which is not ideal. Um, and I had some comments on previous videos about tapping the mold to get a better fill So I did it on this video to see what it you know if it affected anything and some of the metal just fell off the side But it was no big deal. Well, the mold's still a bit hot But you know what? Let's crack this open and see if this was a success or a total failure Well, it looks like it came out pretty good one of the holes didn't fill with metal, but I can drill it out all together uh, we got a pretty good fill. So here it is after I took off all the sprues, drilled out all the holes. Um, you know, I just drilled all of them out just to make sure they were the proper size. Uh, they were real close. And I sanded it down and sanded down the face that meets the actual carb so that was nice and flush and, you know, will seal right. I also drilled a hole in the bowl area that's supposed to be there from the pictures that I've seen. So it's ready to go on the carb. Let's take a look. We got it all installed, all the screws are down, the gasket's on, and it is ready to go. Now I just got to put a new bulb, uh, primer bulb in there in the carb and replace a couple of the hoses. And it should be ready to fire up and weed whack, although I'm not really looking forward to weed whacking. But it does need to be done. Altogether, I think this was a pretty successful project, but we'll see. Will it start? Well, that was this week's project, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit like and subscribe to see what comes out next. Also, you can hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. And if you really enjoy my channel, then you can go over to the Patreon page. It costs you a buck a month and support me there. It really helps out. And as always, guys, I will see you next time.